You cannot logic your way to God's existence. You can successfully argue for the existence of just about anything, provided you never have to produce any actual evidence. Logic alone cannot prove that something exists. At some point, you are going to have to provide some empirical evidence, or all you're doing is playing an elaborate game of pretend. Take TAG, for example, the transcendental argument for the existence of God. In a nutshell, TAG basically says that we cannot account for objective morality, except if it is granted, or mandated, by a deity. It says that to be able to assign right or wrong values to any given behavior, we need a god to basically set up the rulebook beforehand. What's wrong with this argument, of course, is that morals may simply not be absolute at all, but rather the strongly held and long-standing opinions of humans, so ingrained in our culture that we only think them objective and transcendent. I discuss this in more detail in one of my other videos. The real issue is that this argument boils down to, morality exists, therefore God exists. No empirical evidence is provided for God's existence. There is nothing that anybody can go and check for themselves which indicates that a God exists. All of the theist's work is still ahead of them, because they have to prove that a God exists to provide these absolute and objective morals, which they also haven't proved exist. All this argument is, really, is baseless assumptions asserted as fact, and then used in a logical shell game to prop up preconceived preferences, which the rest of us must take for granted. This would never hold up in a court of law or a peer-reviewed science journal, yet theists find it ever so convincing. And TAG certainly isn't the only place where theists use these kinds of logical tactics. Goodness, no, not at all. There is also the teleological argument. An ordered universe requires an orderer. The cosmological argument. We needed a god to light the fuse on the Big Bang. The ontological argument. If you think it, he will come. And so on. I could list a double-wide buttload of these, but they all have one thing in common. Not a one of them provides any actual, empirical, physical evidence, and yet theists seem to think they're all slam dunks for proving the existence of God. Frankly, I don't see why any of them should be the least bit convincing. If you want me to believe that something exists, whether it's a God, a carrot, or your dad's Chevy, you're going to have to provide empirical evidence of it, not try to do an end run around the lack of facts by using tortured logic. There are many things we can logically show, provided we don't have to actually prove any of it with hard evidence. And there are so many ways in which religion could be proved, provided it happens to be true, that don't rely on this kind of credulity. Religious texts make claims about the nature of the universe and events which have happened, which can be checked scientifically. If the claims in those texts do not hold up under scrutiny, well, chances are good that your religion is simply false. Here are a few examples of the things we can scientifically check. The beginning of the universe, six days or several billion years. The genesis of humanity, Adam and Eve or evolution. Noah's flood, ark or archaeology. Sodom and Gomorrah, asteroids assailing amorous arenas or magical meteors mashing malevolent metropolises. Each of these events would have left traces which science could detect, and in some cases has. Evolution and the beginning of the universe have tons of evidence showing how and when they happen. No evidence has ever been found for a worldwide flood, nor is there any reason to assume that a boatload of just one mating pair of each type of animal could possibly repopulate the Earth after such a disaster. Just as examples. If any of these events took place as the Bible describes, we should be able to at least show that these things happened. And if we can do that, we can also study how they happened, and if the events seem illogical, or if it's clear that the events did occur yet should be impossible, then we would be justified in positing a potentially supernatural explanation. But even then, there is no reason to assume that this explanation is the biblical God. With all those challenges facing proof that God exists, to behave as if logic alone should get us there without any physical evidence to back it up is patently absurd. These arguments should not be convincing to anybody who actually cares about what's real, and they certainly shouldn't be convincing to any self-respecting atheist.
If you theist types want to convert us to your position, you're going to have to abandon these arguments and start providing empirical proof. So sorry. And just to head off at the pass an argument that I know is coming up in comments if I don't address it now, the existence of things like numbers or mathematics for which we have no empirical proof is not an equivalent claim to the existence of God. Numbers don't have a physical existence, nor do they physically interact with the world. We've assigned words to certain concepts, but that's the only way numbers exist, as ideas. You can have two of something, but two itself exists only in our minds. The claims that deities exist is something else entirely. Numbers do not exhibit behaviors, do not talk to humans, do not perform feats of magic, and do not manipulate the world of their own free will. According to holy texts, gods do, and that interaction makes the matters for empirical proof, which numbers are not, so don't even go there. Until next time, folks. <laughs>